Okay, so here we go for our problem, our example problem for RLC parallel circuits with an alternating current. I've already made videos for RL and RC. You can link to those in the upper right-hand corner. But we're going to put it all together, RLC circuits for this video. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can subscribe. You can thumbs up. You can leave me a comment. Please leave me a comment. I always want to know what people think about the video, support my channel. Thank you very much. And let's get started with our problem for RLC parallel circuits. So here we have our alternating voltage source. We have a resistor, we have a ductor, we have a capacitor, 230 volts, frequency 55 uh, hertz. The resistance of the resistor is 150 ohms. And the inductance of the inductor is 750 millihenries and the capacitance of the capacitor is 15 microfarads. And we're going to do all the following things. We're going to get the inductive and the capacitive reactance. We're going to determine the current through each branch. We're going to get the phasor diagram, the phase angle. We're going to get the total impedance. We're going to get the admittance triangle. And again, get the phase angle that way also. So let's get started. We're going to do the inductive and the capacitive reactance. Now, I just want to point out we have RLC. We have all three of those things. So we're going to do a fair amount of math. And it's good to try and go through all this step by step and keep it all straight one thing at a time. So we're going to capacitive and inductive reactance. First, the capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi f frequency times the capacitance of the capacitor. If you plug all those values in and do that math, you should get 193 ohms. All right, then we're going to do the uh, inductive, uh, the inductor, uh, rea the inductive reactance is 2 times pi times frequency times the inductance of the inductor, and you should get 250 nine ohms. Okay, make sure you can do that in your calculator. You can always pause the video and check to make sure you get those values, but let's go on and get the current. Okay, we're going to get the current through each branch, the resistor, the inductive branch, and the capacitive branch. So we're going to have to do that three different times. We're going to use Ohm's law of v equals I times R. We're going to solve that for the current, and the current through the resistor is V divided by R then the voltage divided by the inductive reactance, and then the voltage divided by the capacitive reactance. I'd just like to point out, don't forget, we're talking about parallel circuits here. The voltage across each branch is equal to each other and also equal to the source. So we're going to have the same voltage and different resistances, which is the opposite, so to speak, of series circuits where we have uh, the same current and different voltages. Here we're going to have the same voltage, but we're going to have different currents, so we're going to calculate the current as the voltage divided by the resistance, and for the resistive branch, we get 1.53 amperes. Again, the same voltage, 230 volts, divided by the inductive reactance, you get 0 0.89 amperes, and for the voltage divided by the capacitive reactance, you get 1.19 amperes. All right, so those are the currents for each branch. Now, those currents can be changing over time because we have an alternating current source, and I didn't say whether this is the voltage that we use is the max or the RMS voltage, but whether it's the max or the RMS, it's the corresponding current. Whether you use the max voltage, you get the max current, or if you use the RMS, and you get the RMS current. Okay, so just be aware of that. Those are the currents for each branch, and therefore now we can uh, draw the phasor diagram, get the total current, and also the phase angle, the angle between the current and the voltage. Now remember, like I said, we have three uh, parts here, the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. We gotta draw them all properly. Generally, what we do is we draw the voltage along the positive x-axis for our reference, and then we draw the vector that represents the current through the resistor also along the x-axis because there's no phase angle between the current through the resistor and the voltage. So that's a zero phase angle. But remember, we have an angle of 90 degrees between the current through the inductor and the voltage and the current through the capacitor and the voltage is 90 degrees. Also, remember Ellie the Iceman, okay? For inductors, the voltage is gonna lead the current. So that's why we have voltage and it's leading the current by 90 degrees. And for ICE, I-C-E, Ellie the Iceman, it's the current leads the voltage in the capacitive branch. And here we have the current leading the voltage. Now we have two vectors. We're gonna add all three of these vectors up vectorally, not just arithmetically. We have to add all three of these vectors up. These two are both on the y-axis. One is positive and one is negative, so we're gonna add those two up. That is the current for the inductive and the capacitive branch. Add those two up. You'll notice this is positive and this is negative. So I'm gonna put down 1.19 minus 
the current through the inductor, which is 0 0.89, and you get that that total current for those two vectors is 0 0.3 amperes, positive. So we have a capacitive circuit here. And now we can draw a vector that represents that. This is the vector that represents the current through the capacitor and the inductor. We add those two up, and that's that vector. Now I try to draw these kind of to scale. This one is probably a little bit too big, but just to see for the video um, <clears throat> how they all work out. So we can add these two up now, this vector and the resistive vector, and we can make a right triangle out of that, and the hypotenuse of that right triangle represent the total current. Now we're going to get the total current and then the phase angle, the angle by which the current leads the voltage. First, we're going to get the total current using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared, which means the hypotenuse is equal to, or the total current is equal to, the square root of the current times the re through the resistor squared plus the sum of the other two squared, which, which got 0.30. Okay, and that means it's 153 squared plus 0 0.30 squared. The square root is 156. Okay, or the answer to that is 1.56 amperes. So that is, this vector represents the total current. The total current is 1.56 amperes. Now we can get the phase angle. Okay, we know all three sides of this triangle now. We have this one, which was 0 0.30. We have this one, which is 153. And we have the total, which we got was 156. Okay, but usually when this is done, we just know these. Maybe we haven't figured out the total current yet, so we're going to use the tangent. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Remember, so Katoa. So the opposite is the sum of these two, which was those 0 0.30. And then the resistor, which is 1.53, we can get that the tangent of that angle is, or the angle for that tangent is 11 degrees. So this angle right here is 11 degrees. Now you can see I drew it right here. It's a little bit, it looks like it's maybe 40 or 45, so it's not the scale, like I said. But this angle is actually 11 degrees. This should be down here, and this should be shorter. Okay? But you get the point. So we got the current. And we got the phase angle, and now we're going to get the total impedance for that circuit. The equation that we're going to use is that the impedance, which has the symbol Z, is equal to the square root of 1 over R squared plus 1 over the capacitive reactance minus 1 over the capacitive, uh, what was this, the inductive reactance minus the capacitive reactance squared, like that. Okay, we can just put those values in. And we get that it's the square root of 1 over 150 squared plus 1 over 259 minus 1 over 193. Remember, these are the capacitive and inductive reactances that we calculated earlier squared. And you get that the impedance for that circuit, the total impedance, the sum of all the reactances and resistances is 147 ohms. Now, we can do that a different way. In the previous example, we had the... Uh, current first, but now we, we know the current, we can uh, solve this equation, which is Ohm's law. We can solve this for V, because now we know the current, and we should get the same value, so that the impedance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. We could do this way right here without knowing the current, but in the previous slide, we got the current, we should get the same answer, which is uh, 230 divided by 156, which is the total current that we got and you see we get the same impedance, 147 ohms like that. Okay, so if you can do it a couple different ways, which you often can, you do that and you'll notice you get the same answer and you have some higher degree of confidence that you're doing the problem correctly. Okay, now we're going to get the admittance. Remember, for parallel circuits, we often talk about admittance because we talk about how much current is admitted through the circuit because we add additional uh, components elements in parallel that we're going to be increasing the current and more current is going to be admitted. All right, so in resist in series circuits, we have, we have resistance and we have reactance. For parallel circuits, we have to talk about conductance, like how much is being conducted, how much current is being conducted through the circuit. And then we have inductive susceptance for the inductive branch, so how susceptible is that inductor to changes in current, and for capacitive susceptance, it's capacitive susceptance, can we talk about how susceptible is that branch to changes in voltage. Now, it's pretty straightforward because G, the conductance, has the symbol G, just 1 over R, okay? Susceptance has the symbol B, so for the inductor, it's just 1 over XL, 
And then for the capacitive branch, the capacitive susceptance is just 1 over the capacitive reactance. All right, just plug those values in. Pretty straightforward. You get that that's 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 3. And then you get 3.86 times 10 to the minus 3. And once again, you get 5.18 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, this is an S. This is the symbol for the susceptance and for the conductance. And that is Siemens. Okay, not ohms, but Siemens, like that. Okay, now we can get uh, draw the admittance triangle, which we draw very similar to the uh, uh, the, uh, the phasor diagram for the uh, current. We're going to add those two up. Okay, we get that when if I add this to get this vector, I add these two values together, just like we did. If I add these two values together, okay, I take this minus this actually. Then I get 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3. That's that vector. I move it over, complete my right triangle. I have my phase angle. I can get my uh, admittance uh, with the Pythagorean theorem again. Do the same thing like we did before. And you get that the admittance is going to be 6.80 times 10 to the minus 3. The more uh, elements we add in, add in parallel, then the admittance would increase. All right? Okay, so that's the admittance, and we can get the angle, the phase angle. We should get the exact same angle of 11 degrees. In both cases, we're going to, again, use our tangent function, and we're going to say it's the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is the sum of these two. You can see minus because I subtracted them, but it's the sum of those two. Um, <clears throat> the susceptances divided by the conductance, and if you do that, you get that, and you get the same angle of 11 degrees, and that lets us know maybe we did the first one correct also, and we did this one correct also. Okay? Now, I think we're going to do one more thing. We're just going to get the current using the admittance. You remember it's actually the admittance is uh, using Ohm's law. The admittance is actually uh, just y, which is the admittance, is 1 over z. It's the reciprocal of the um, impedance, and you can see here that we have the current total is equal to the voltage divided by the impedance. That's the equation we used earlier. But the admittance is 1 over the impedance, and this is the voltage is 1 over, this is really 1 over z here. We can take this out, so to speak, Vs times 1 over z, so I can substitute y in. So I get that the total current is the voltage of the source times the uh, admittance, 230 times the admittance, which we got on the previous slide, and you'll see we get the same current of 156, 1.56, obviously. And I can actually solve this equation. And you see if I do y, the admittance is 1 over 147, which is the impedance that we calculated earlier. Then I'll also get this same value for the admittance, which we calculated earlier. So it all fits together. You know, piece, pieces of a puzzle all come together, and hopefully you get it all right. Okay. Now, I know there was a lot to do in a, in a single video, but I think if you go back, if you're not sure, Check some of those parts, hit the pause button, check the math, go through some of the problems. I think you'll find that will be helpful for you. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math news, step-by-step -step science. You can uh, give me a thumbs up. You can leave me a comment. Like I said, please leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you think about the videos. And you can share this video with all of your friends. I'm sure they'll find it very fascinating. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.